Welcome to Orange Park Presbyterian Church. Uh, today is uh, the Lord's Day. It is the third Sunday in the season of Easter, uh, April 26. And we welcome you to be part of our uh, time of worship. Um, we are gathering today for worship from lots of different places and locations, uh, but we are gathering together in one place as we are united uh, during this time with, uh, with the video of our service. I would invite you to take just a few moments uh, during the music that you'll be hearing to, uh, to center your heart and your mind and to uh, allow yourself to recognize the connection that we have with each other. Even though we may not be together in the same place, we are still connected uh, with our hearts and our spirits at one time in one place as one beloved community. Welcome to our time of worship. Greetings. Let us worship God. As the sun set over the village of Emmaus, Jesus took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to his friends. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. Today, we gather from different places in our journey, hoping and trusting to behold the risen Lord. May your eyes be opened to recognize Jesus in our midst.
The Spirit of God helps us in our weakness, interceding with sighs too deep for words. Trusting in God's grace, let us confess our sin. Living Lord, by the power of your Spirit, you are present among us. Yet like the first disciples, we fail to see you in our midst. We do not realize you are walking beside us. For we are rushing to meet the demands of hectic schedules and overcrowded lives. We do not notice you in everyday encounters. For we are distracted by daily labors and consumed by our own concerns. We do not recognize you in our streets or at our tables. For our expectations are too limited to imagine all the ways you dwell among us. Open our eyes to perceive you in our midst, so that seeing you clearly, we might follow you faithfully. Hear the good news of God's promise. I will pour my spirit on all flesh. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. For hearing the word of God in Scripture, let us pause for a word of prayer. Living God, with joy we celebrate the presence of the risen word. Enliven our hearts by your spirit so that we may proclaim the good news of eternal and abundant life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first scripture reading comes from Psalm 116, verses 1 through 4. I love the Lord because he heard my voice and my supplications. Because he inclined his ear to me, therefore I will call on him as long as I live. The snares of death encompassed me. The the pangs of Sheol laid a hold on me. I suffered distress and anguish. Then I called on the name of the Lord. O Lord, I pray, save my life. The gospel lesson this morning is taken from Luke chapter 24, verses 13 through 35, and I'll be reading from the message, which is the uh, paraphrase version that was prepared by Eugene Peterson. That same day, two of them were walking to the village of Emmaus, about seven miles out of Jerusalem. They were deep in conversation, going over all of these things that had happened. In the middle of their talk and questions, Jesus came up and walked along with them, but they were not able to recognize who he was. He asked, what is this you're discussing so intently as you walk along? They just stood there, long-faced, like they had lost their best friend. Then one of them, his name was Cleopas, said, are you the only one in Jerusalem who hasn't heard what's happened during the last few days? He said, what has happened? And they said, the things that happened to Jesus, the Nazarene, he was a man of God, a a prophet, dynamic in work and word, blessed by both God and all the people. Then our high priests and leaders betrayed him and got him sentenced to death and crucified him. And we had our hopes up that he was the one, the one about to deliver Israel. It is now the third day since it happened. But now some of our women have completely confused us. Early this morning, they were at the tomb and and couldn't find his body. They came back with a story that, that they'd seen a vision of angels 
who said that he was alive. Some of our friends went off to the tomb to check and found it empty, just as the women said, but they didn't see Jesus. Then Jesus said to them, so thick-headed, so slow-hearted, why can't you simply believe all that the prophets said? Don't you see that these things had to happen, that the Messiah had to suffer and only then enter into his glory? Then he started at the beginning with the books of Moses and, and went through all of the prophets, pointing out everything in the scriptures that referred to him. They came to the edge of the village where they were heading, headed. He acted as if he were going on, but they pressed him, stay and have supper with us. It's nearly evening. The day is gone. So he went in with them. And here is what happened. He sat down at the table with them. And then taking the bread, he blessed and he, he broke and he gave it to them. And at that moment, opened-eyed, wide-eyed, they recognized him. And then he disappeared. Back and forth they talked. Didn't we feel on fire as he conversed with us on the road, as, as he opened up the scriptures to us? They didn't waste a minute. They were up and on their way back to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their friends gathered together, talking away. It's really happened. The master has been raised up. Simon saw him. Then the two went over everything that happened on the road and how they recognized him when he broke the bread. May the Lord bless the reading and the hearing of this God's holy word. <clears throat> you know, I rather like this story of the road to Emmaus. Uh, there is something comforting about it. Two disciples, two followers of Jesus, heading home after a most difficult Holy Day weekend, two followers. One is named Cleopas, the other is not. It could be the spouse of Cleopas, or, or a sibling, or perhaps, a, or, or maybe a childhood friend, a, com, uh, a trusted companion. It could be me. It could be you. See, the unnamed traveler invites us into this story. We are invited to be the companion of Cleopas on this fate-filled journey. Often the gospel writers, Luke included, will tell stories for the purpose of teaching their congregations something about being the church. Their communities were the first audience for their writings. So how would they hear the story? What might they discover about themselves as the body of Christ, the beloved community? It also makes me wonder how the story would have been told by the travelers during those years immediately following and as they remembered that day and before Luke wrote it down for the centuries to come. <clears throat> Cleopas and I had been part of this extended family during the Passover celebration. Of course, Jesus had his inner circle of 12 plus the women, but, but he was also generous in hospitality, welcoming others into his family. The Passover meal is to be shared with family. So we were there that night when he led the Seder. You know, the Seder is the, the traditional meal that that retells the story of the Exodus, how, how God liberated God's people from slavery and, and provided for them the, the new life, the, the new identity, a, a new way to be God's people. We were there when Jesus extended the meal 
by, by taking bread and, and breaking it and, and giving it to us to share. And, and he took a cup and he, and he poured wine and he, and he passed it to us to sip. The Passover meal is about remembering, remembering the acts of God. And Jesus is telling us to remember him, to remember his body and his blood. You know, we had no clue at the time what he was talking about. We could feel the tension in the air, yet we were just as aware that with Jesus, there was this deep peace that was beyond our understanding. And then Friday happened. Friday. You call it Good Friday? For us, it was the darkest of days. To see Jesus with nails driven through his hands and his feet and then, and then being lifted up on those wooden beams to, to slowly suffocate in a painful death. It is tragic enough to watch someone you admire to die like that was even more disorienting was that we had such dreams, we, we had such hope for Jesus. Uh, we, we, we had hoped how Jesus would be the new Messiah, the, the new Moses, the, the, the prophet like Elijah, bringing renewal to our faith. And now everything, everything we thought we knew was laid to rest in the tomb with our Savior's lifeless body, our world was shattered. The, the disorientation was so great, I wasn't even sure which way was up. The, the next day, Saturday, our Sabbath, it came as a, a sad relief. Sabbath laws prevent us from engaging in, in any kind of work that might distract us, and our fear of being caught up in the anger that killed Jesus kept us from venturing out. We, we found safety by staying in for the day. We, we found small comfort by sheltering in place with a handful of our, our trusted friends. On the first day of the week, after the Sabbath rest, it was time for folks to get back to work. It was time for pilgrims to make their way back home. So Cleopas and I made our preparations. There were rumors starting to circulate. Some of the women went to the tomb early in the morning and they found that it was opened and empty. They even reported seeing a vision of angels who, who told them that Jesus was alive. Some men went to the tomb and they confirmed that it was empty, but, but still they did not see Jesus, and it seemed like just foolishness. So Cleopas and I started on the road. Nothing left for us in Jerusalem. No reason to stay with the others. There was nothing to hold us together anymore. We might as well head home. <laughs> you know... I'm, I'm still amazed and, and, and somewhat embarrassed. When we left on our journey, we were imagining the women having held on to some foolishness because they couldn't see what was so plain. Jesus was dead. Someone could have stolen the body for any number of reasons, but, but that doesn't change what we saw. Jesus died, plain and simple, and the women could not see the truth of it. And now, now I laugh at how Cleopas and I would walk for miles with this stranger beside us talking with us without a clue as to who he really was. Did our grief fog our minds so badly that we couldn't see? Have you ever had the experience of traveling while while talking with a good friend or, or listening to a great story and, and you, you, you get to your destination and you are astounded 
to not remember how you got there. You don't remember the distance or the turns that you made or the speeding up and slowing down or, or the people you passed. All you remember is the story that, that burned in your hearts. That's precisely what happened with us. The stranger listened patiently as we told our story. And, and, and when we finished, he, he began to tell us how our story of the previous day, which, which made no sense to us, actually did make sense in ways that we never realized. He opened our minds to understand with such gentleness and grace. So we finally arrived at our stop. Now, who knows how long it took. We couldn't remember the road, but we knew we had been on a marvelous journey. The stranger was not going to stop with us, but it was getting late. The road could be dangerous for a lone traveler, so we, we pressed him to stay the night. We, we invited him to share our meal. <clears throat> Honestly, I believe he really would not have stopped. He would not have stayed had we not insisted, had we not invited him in. You know what happened next. It gives me chill bumps every time I remember it. We were at the table. The guest becomes the host. He gives thanks. He, he breaks the bread and he hands it to us. The memories start flooding to our minds. The, the Passover, the, the broken bread, the cup, the invitation to remember. We remembered. We, we could see more clearly than ever before. And at, at as soon as it was clear that we understood, he was gone. What do you naturally want to do when you see a friend that you thought you would never see again? You want to shout. You want to sing. You want to talk. You want to tell stories. You want to hear their stories. You want to hug your friend and never, ever let go. But he wasn't there to be hugged. But the other friends, we could tell them, we could share our stories, we, we could sing and we could shout, we could, we could hug them and never let go. Cleopas and I, we ran back to Jerusalem just as fast as our weary legs could take us. When, when we arrived, others had also their stories to tell and, and indeed we laughed and we cried and we talked and we hugged and that was only the beginning. Something new had begun. We had no clue what would emerge from this experience but we knew we would be traveling the road together. We would figure it out together. We knew that it was likely, that there was likely to be some stranger on the road with us from time to time who would make our hearts strangely warmed and, and chill bumps run up our skin. So I tell you my story again, the story that you've heard before, because there's a few things that I have learned that I want to share with you. First, when times are difficult, it's important to be able to tell your story. It's, it's also important to listen, to be open to stories that are different from yours. You see, that first Sunday, our world was so confused and dark and disoriented, nothing made any sense to us. And, and in the middle of the confusion, we continued to tell our story, to remember and to tell each other. 
We, we remembered how God had been active in the past. We remembered how we confronted and, and encouraged each other. We, we continued to seek in, in that present moment what little that we could grasp, that we were able to grasp. Some of it seemed like foolishness, but, but we told it anyway. You never know where your journey will take you, but by telling your story, you keep the journey open. The listening is also important. Now, don't simply listen to the same voices you've always heard. Listen for something new. Listen, listen to the women, for heaven's sake. So what sounds foolish to you may carry truth that you could never imagine yourself. And I would say to you good people, where you are today, listen to people of color. Listen to people of different cultures. Listen to, to people of different experiences, life experiences. You see, they see Jesus in ways that you could not imagine on your own. The time is right for you to open yourself to see how Jesus may be traveling next to you in some disguise. Tell your stories of God's working. Listen to the stories of others about how God is working. Something else that I learned. It is good to show hospitality to strangers. Your guest may become your host. Or in other words, the stranger may be Jesus incognito. There are many ways, of course, to show hospitality. Offering a traveler safe lodging and a warm meal is surely welcomed by the traveler. At this very moment in your own community and in, in your own time, there is tremendous need. Your pandemic is creating suffering that is, that is often hidden because of the social distancing that is required to stop the spread. People have lost jobs, lost income. At, at, some, at the same time, they have medical bills and, and they need to feed their family. Hospitality means to not look away from the suffering, but to offer a helping hand. And the person that you help may be, for someone else, a source of comfort and compassion and love. You may never know about it. The other person may be Jesus incognito to someone else. And the person that you help may see that you have been for them a life-saving grace. You may be for them Jesus incognito and may never know. See, hospitality for strangers is like entertaining angels unaware. The final lesson that I'd like to share with you that I learned on that journey to Emmaus with Jesus incognito is just how important it is to be part of the beloved community. Here we were, the two of us, leaving by ourselves because we saw no reason to stay when life seemed to bleak. You know, communities can be messy at times, and, and there are times when you may feel the need to step back or step away, but, but truth be told, we are meant to be in community with each other. When Jesus broke the bread and we recognized him, and then he was gone from our sight. We ran back to the others. 
We had something marvelous to share, and we knew that they would be eager to hear. But, but more than that, you see, we remembered that when Jesus shared the bread, he said, this is my body for you. And now he was gone from our side. We are now the body of Christ for others. We are the bread of life to bring hope and grace into the world. We cannot do it alone by ourselves. We are the body together. We need each other in order to be the body. And it is through the beloved community that we can see God's grace in action. In the beloved community, we share our stories. We hear the stories of others and seek stories that are different from ours. And through the beloved community, we are able to share hospitality in new ways, share grace and hope with those in need. My friends, I have shared with you my story of traveling with Cleopas, our, our, our story of meeting Jesus on the road incognito, and now, now it is your turn to share your story. Tell someone in your community of believers how God has made a difference in your life. Listen to the stories of others. Work together to be the body of Christ, the beloved community, where you are. Blessed be the Lord, who has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen.
please join me in our affirmation of faith adapted from the confession of 1967. New life in Christ takes shape in a community in which people know that God loves and accepts them in spite of what they are. They therefore accept themselves and love others, knowing that no one has any ground on which to stand except God's grace. Again, I'd like to say a word of welcome. I'm really glad that you've been able to be a part of this time of worship together. Uh, just a few reminders that or uh, items that I'd like to highlight for you today. Uh, first, our church continues to um, explore ways in which we can be supportive in our community in the Clay County area. And so this, on, uh, on May the 5th, Tuesday, May the 5th, we'll be having another a drop off in the church parking lot for items for the clothes closet and, and food pantry. Uh, you'll be getting more information about that in, in mail and email. Um, I'd also like to say a, a word of thanks to a variety of folks, and I'm not going to try to name everybody right now, but, uh, but we enjoyed a recording session this morning where we in, uh, recorded a number of hymns that we'll be able to use with services going forward. Uh, I would like to say a special word of thanks to Kyung Kwok, who has been our um, uh, uh, recorder, our, our videographer for these events, uh, and for all of the, the, the choir people, uh, the music people who joined together and sharing their talents and helping us with the songs uh, for today and, and some soup, uh, following Sundays. Now, normally in this time of the service, we would be inviting people to, um, uh, to share their offerings where we would be passing plates. We're not going to be passing plates, but I do want to remind you uh, that the church continues to have the, uh, uh, the same kind of overhead and needs, and we hope that you will make your contributions to the church, uh, mailing them in to the church office or sending them in however you're able uh, to help continue the ministry that we are doing. During these times when we are separated from each other, we are also beginning to explore some new opportunities and the new ways in which we might be able to reach out to each other, support each other, um, be present and active in our ministry. We may be trying some new things and experimenting with some stuff, and you may be invited to participate. And we hope uh, that if you are invited that you will uh, consider how you can be of a support um, and if there are some ways that you might have in your mind that you think about, uh, you're welcome to uh, let us know. Send it, me an email, uh, send an email to the church, give us a call. Uh, we want to use this opportunity to explore some new things. Some things uh, might work well and they continue. Some things we might decide, oh, that was a fun experiment, let's move on. Uh, but that's what this time is all about for us. God has given us this opportunity Let's use it, let's be creative, and let's have fun. We come now to a time of prayer. <clears throat> For our prayers of the people, our pastoral prayer this morning, I actually have chosen a, uh, to utilize a prayer by, um, uh, by Jill Duffield. You may recognize the name. She was the author of the book that we used during Lenten, during the Lent season. A uh, book of devotions, uh, Sunday school classes use them, um, and she is continuing to provide some material, and I would like to use uh, her prayers of the people uh, today uh, as our time of prayer. Uh, there'll be a couple moments of silence during the prayer, and, and we will just kind of pause for a little bit, allowing you to let that time be an opportunity for you to focus your own uh, thoughts and concerns Let us pray. God of all times and places, we cannot stop talking about the painful events that we have witnessed this week. We are discussing the numbers of people killed by COVID-19. 
We speak constantly of the suffering brought on by this pandemic. We talk about the economic, the physical, mental, spiritual, psychological distress all over the globe. And we debate the merits and risks of reopening our country. We cannot turn away from the anxiety that feels ever present. We know you hear our voices and our supplications. We give thanks that you do not leave us alone. As the risen Christ comes alongside us now, we pour out our hearts unashamed to share exactly how we feel and what we fear in this moment. And we rest in your sure presence as we share with you now our thoughts and worries, our hopes and our doubts. God of all times and places, tell us again the story of salvation. Remind us how you rescued us from Egypt and sustained us in the wilderness. Help us to remember that you were with us in exile and made a way to bring us home. Do not let us forget that you can use for good even that which we intend for evil. Bring to our minds the countless times that you have not allowed the storms of this life to overtake us. We know you hear our voices and our supplications. We give thanks that you do not leave us alone. As the risen Christ comes alongside us now, we urge him not to leave, but instead to stay with us. We abide in your resurrected presence as we listen for your living word. Give us your guidance in this trying time. God of all times and places, having heard your word and broken bread with you, we recognize our Lord alive and showing us the way. You do indeed make all things possible, defeating evil, overcoming death, restoring us to right relationship with you and one another. Send us to those places in deepest need of knowing that creation is redeemed and nothing can separate us from your love. Hear our voices and our shouts of praise as we proclaim, we have seen the Lord. He is risen indeed. We are not and will never be alone. We make our prayer in the name of the one who taught us to say when we pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
as we close the service, I would simply like to remind you that we are indeed a beloved community, even though we may be scattered. I implore you to find ways to reach out to one another, to offer your love and your support and your uh, expressions of compassion uh, to one another. And as you are able, we encourage you to find ways to provide uh, a little extra support and encouragement for those in the community who may be struggling. And now, may the steadfast love of the Lord be yours this day and forever. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Do not be afraid. Go, tell this good news to all. Thanks be to God. Amen. And may the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. Amen. There's a dark and a troubled side of life There's a bright and a sunny side too Let us meet with the darkness and strife The sunny side we also may view Keep on the sunny side, always on the sunny side Keep on the sunny side of life It will help us every day, it will brighten all the way If we keep on the sunny side of life Every day it will brighten all the way If we keep on the same side of life Let us sing with a song of hope each day Though the moments be cloudy or fair, let us trust in the Savior always to keep everyone in his care. We'll keep on the sunny side, always on the sunny side. Keep on the sunny side of life. It will help us every day, it will brighten all the way if we keep on the sunny side of life. Bye.